redivided Europe. And Thane, uh, your chapter on Ukraine is fascinating to me because I had no idea about this, that uh, in fact, in, in the Soviet Union, Ukraine was the big supplier of gas. It was the original gas uh, state in the Soviet Union. And in fact, the only reason we're now uh, talking about Russian gas is because the Ukrainian gas eventually uh, got tapped out. But that's why, uh, for example, all those gas lines run through Ukraine because Ukraine was gas central in the old Soviet days. That's absolutely right. The central planners used the, the Ukrainian gas first, which made a lot of sense. Then they discovered gas and oil in the northern part of West Siberia, which is where most of their oil and gas comes from today. But you're absolutely mm. right. right. In the meantime, they built those pipelines. And so when the Soviet Union broke up, the Russians were left with the gas, but the Ukrainians were left with the pipes. So they've been fighting over mm. the rents from gas exports ever since. It's been a 30-year bad marriage, and now it's a messy divorce. Well, there are other parties in this marriage, uh, notably Germany. Uh, and we talk a lot about the impact if, if Germ and Germany's backed off that a bit in, in the last couple of days. It's in less of a hurry to back off uh, Russian gas. But if, say, they go ahead with this uh, cutting off Russian oil, if the West, if North America and Europe go ahead with cutting off Russian oil and gas, I heard today uh, somebody worrying that this would actually uh, destabilize all kinds of other parts of the planet, because in, in parts of Africa, where suddenly the cost of filling up your car triples, uh, there's going to be a lot more instability all over the, the planet. What do you think will happen as the main consequence of what the Americans and the Europeans are now proposing to do? The United States, we take a percent of our oil from Russia. That's mostly oil that's used in our refineries. So that's an inconvenience, but it's uh, certainly not uh, life-threatening. Uh, it's really uh, the, uh, the total uh, supply of oil to the world. And that's very much under the control these days not just of OPEC, which used to have just 13 members, Saudi Arabia and so on, but Russia has joined in the last few years. Mm -hmm. And so there are now 13 plus 10. And that includes now Russia and Kazakhstan and some others. Uh, the, the 23 together have vowed that they're going to, uh, uh, to refrain from increasing uh, oil production. They want to keep that oil price up. But now you might say they've gotten perhaps a little bit too much of a good thing with oil prices where they are right now. They have vowed to increase their oil exports by 400,000 barrels a day every month. But there are some signs that they don't have the capacity quite to follow through on that. So, yes, uh, tight. And if you add to that, the, uh, the, uh, the portion of Russian oil exports, why the upward pressures on price are going to be even greater.